Oh, sorry. Oh. Hello. And welcome to TV Burp. Violet gives birth to a mobile phone on Coronation Street. <laughs> After Take That win Best Live Band of the Brits, Robbie Williams launches new act. <laughs> Amanda Holden's flirting causes trouser noise on Wild at Heart. And again, an extra week without the kids could have its compensations. Mm. <laughs> and an American princess, Paul Burrell, finally admitted it. The closest these girls have come to a tea leaf is probably having their fortunes told. Until they've met you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, American princess. And it's nice sometimes when you're watching TV to be reminded that whatever your problems, there's always someone worse off than you. The scones came to the table already filled with jam and cream. They created tea time etiquette disaster. It's a, a scone sandwich. <laughs> I always like to put more jam and less cream, and the fact that they had already done it for me, that, it stopped me from even having one. <laughs> already filled! That may seem trivial, but he needs those scones to live. Remember, it takes just four scones a day to feed a toff, but don't fill them, no, because it puts them off and they might die. <laughs> this week... We saw the end of everyone's favourite trainee princess, Kirsten Stiff, who gave a very moving farewell speech. This has been an amazing experience. I'm leaving here with more knowledge and a more rounded, well-rounded personality. <laughs> and I appreciate that so much. Well, that's very interesting, but... Uh... As to you girls, ladies, we've had our troubles. We all know that. And we all haven't been completely kind all the time, including me. As I say, it's very sad to... <laughs> but I see something really special in each of you. And each of you can do so much goodness in this world. Yeah, we've all got things to do. So, <laughs> so I ask you, no matter if you are the next American princess or not, to go home and put smiles on people's faces <laughs> instead of tears. Because each of you can just <laughs> 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 Sorry, Kristen. That's what you got your slung out in the first place. It was all go on EastEnders this week. Keith Miller was very pleased with his dog, Genghis. Genghis! Hey, hey! He smells like a meadow. If the meadow was next to a landfill site. <laughs> And if you want your house to smell like Genghis, you can get this new Genghis air freshener. Yeah. There's the Genghis aerosol. That's rather nice. Then for the car, we've got the, uh, the magic Genghis. <laughs> and if you're after the full effect, you've got the, uh, the Genghis plug-in. There you go. I was disappointed this week that the slate of parrot wasn't featured. Last week he was all over the show. It's amazing how a parrot can introduce a little humour into a serious situation. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about you take this list and get yourself down to the supermarket? What's brought this on? She just fancied seeing you. All right, I better get moving it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> it's been donkey's years. What exactly are you waiting for? No. A Zimmer frame? Incontinent knickers? No. If I were pulling like a magnet, I would seriously consider replying myself. Screw it up, eh, Mark? <laughs> Watches already programmed and blabs a lot. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. A fella could go anywhere on the back of this. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's all right. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great diffuser of tension, the parrot. I'd like to see him turn up on some of the other serious shows. Is some, uh, something wrong? Your husband's been involved in a car accident. Oh, he was drunk. The thing is, he's also been stabbed several times. 
He's going to be fine. So you shot an unarmed man? For Christ's sake, he murdered my son, then turns up after my daughter? Why would he want to hurt her? Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Queen Charlotte. Richard. Good evening, Mother. Your Majesty, Abigail. Uh, we were just, um... <laughs> Time for a look at this week's Freaky Eaters. Chips, pizza, <laughs> sausages, chucky bars, tasty muck. <laughs> the show that pokes fun at people who can't nosh proper like us. <laughs> and this week, it was almost like a celebrity version of Freaky Eaters. Yes, with top DJ Christopher Hawkins. So, tell do, what is Chris's freaky food hang-up? Chris's poor diet is the result of an embarrassing secret. He's terrified of fruit and vegetables. <laughs> terrified of fruit and veg! Carrot! <laughs> <laughs> Sweet corn! <laughs> you shepherd! Yeah, of course, they'll have some. Yeah, yeah. No, well, it sort of runs in the family, the whole phobia thing. I mean, his dad has his own hang-ups. What phobia did he have? My dad's phobia is of dead matches. <laughs> well, get a lighter then. <laughs> yeah, you could pretty much stop dead all the male side of the Hawkins family with that. <laughs> a grape. <laughs> with a match in it. <laughs> get back. Get back, Hawkins family. <laughs> what this show did do was create one of the most exciting bits of TV of the week. Real nail-biting stuff. Do you think you could pick one of those up? <laughs> Just hold it in your hand. <laughs> I've never... <laughs> All we're doing right now is holding a spear of asparagus. OK. So you're having to psych yourself up. That's exactly what I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> he held the asparagus! 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 He may have held the asparagus, but it doesn't bode well that Chris has washed his hands of Natalie's instructions to hold an orange. She held the orange. He held the orange. No! He, no, he didn't hold the orange. No, no, he, he didn't hold the orange. No, he held the asparagus, but he didn't hold the orange. He didn't hold the orange. He didn't hold the orange. He held the, he held the asparagus. Yeah. You love the orange. No, it's a bit unfair because to us it's a bit of a laugh, Chris not being able to eat fruit and veg, but to Chris, of course, it's a big deal. People don't perceive a phobia of fruit and vegetables as a problem. Quite bizarrely, they, they just think you're a fatty eater and you're a bit fussy. I find that quite irritating. I find it irritating to the point of, like, wanting to punch someone in the face. Still, though, what a fussy, fatty eater. <laughs> so I hold the asparagus, but I also hold the orange. <laughs> oh, I'm with dead mats in it. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. stretched to the limits watching Tropic of Capricorn on BBC Two this week. Imagine a line more than 22,000 miles long that cuts through some of the most remote areas of the Southern Hemisphere. 
<laughs> no, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I can imagine a line about six foot long, but then it starts to curve round at the top. Besides, I'm a Sagittarius. So, come on, help me with this 22,000 mile long line. Just over there is where the Tropic of Capricorn hits Africa. Where? <laughs> of course it's invisible. Yes, the BBC is paying a stranger to follow an invisible line round the Earth. Think how many freaky eaters they could have made with the money from that. <laughs> Before long, he finds himself sandboarding in the Namibian desert. Hang on, he's sandboarding in the Namibian desert. I'm watching Emmerdale. How did that happen? <laughs> Namibia is becoming a top destination for adventure travel, and young entrepreneurs are harnessing some of the world's biggest sand dunes for the latest sports craze, sandboarding. Yeah, the problem with sandboarding is you start off with a very thick board, and the more you do it... <laughs> ..the thinner it gets. <laughs> But I must say, I was most interested in the rather unusual way they clear mines in Mozambique. These Gambian giant pouch rats can weigh several kilos, but they're still light enough to be able to walk over the unexploded mines without detonating them. <laughs> Snip. Snip them along and see what he can find. They're easy to train, and in a poor country like Mozambique, they're much cheaper than conventional mine-clearing machines. But which is better at detecting rats? <laughs> the Gambian giant pouch rats or conventional mine clearing machines? There's only one way to find out. TV Burp. Talking Lima on Tropic of Capricorn. Some place in the National Park where there are a lot of... Parachute does a press-up on freaky eaters. I think his eating problems are very tied up with his need to be in control and also to avoid... <laughs> Australian Trevor MacDonald on Wild at Heart. What's the last thing you want to hear when you're about to go under a general anaesthetic? Dr. Ellsworth Wareham has just turned 92 and is about to perform open heart surgery. I'm feeling better! <laughs> We've got a little bit of backstory on Corey this week. We actually found out where Blanche spent her honeymoon. We had three nights in a B and b for our honeymoon. Reeton Gap. Reeton Gap, yeah. It's no longer there due to continental shift. <laughs> When Blanche got married, you could still walk over to France. <laughs> it's so long ago that Time Team are digging it up next week. <laughs> but, as well as that old face, there was a new face on the street. Bob, the cleaner. And I say face because without much to say, he has to say it all with his face. It's more like a concerned father-to-be type thing. <laughs> Bob here is going to transform this... Um... Flat into a germ-free, dirt-free, infection-free maternity ward for Sean Jr. He's a cleaner. <laughs> this is a cleaner that's been recommended by Marcus, who has the most exacting standards when it comes to hygiene. I've ever told you you don't let me use his teeth. Why couldn't you have warned me? Well, because it is a spoil that's crap. Bob into the kitchen. But the big news was Violet giving birth on the floor of the Rover's return. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. She'd been caught short at the back of the pub. Yeah, she tried to phone for help, dropped the phone, which looked a little bit like uh, giving birth to a mobile phone. But... Bob, you cleaned those toilets. Yeah, off you go. <laughs> yeah. Bob. Bob. Yes. Violet gave birth in the pub, and Sean was most helpful. <laughs> Everyone was there. I couldn't make it in person, so I sent my mini-me. Yeah, you can just see the back of my head in the front of the shot. <laughs> 